our Bibles to Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. Very familiar portion of Scripture here. Let's begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We do pray that you'd bless the reading of your word. Lord, I pray that at this moment may you drowned out all the distractions that are around us. Lord, uh, whether it's family problems, could be just the busyness of the holiday season, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that at this moment our hearts and our attention might be drawn to you and to your word. We invite the Holy Spirit of God to now come. Lord, we surrender ourselves to his working at this time. We're thankful for the promise of your word that it is sharper than a two-edged sword, that it can pierce down into our hearts. And Lord, for some of us who are here, you may need to take your word by the Spirit of God and pierce our hearts concerning the matter of salvation. And I pray that you convict us of our sin, and our filthiness. Lord, that we'd understand that we are dead in our trespasses and sin, and there's nothing that we can do to help ourselves. The only hope that we have is the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may those who are without Christ put their faith and trust in Him today and be born again. Lord, maybe there's some who are here this morning that they've wandered away. They've decided that they're going to live life their own way. They've made themselves the God of their life. And God, I pray that Your Word would pierce down into their heart. Lord, they'd understand the joy that comes from having fellowship with you, having a right relationship. May they repent of their sin. And as we sing that song, may they come home to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Lord, I understand this time of year for some brings great pain and sorrow. Lord, thinking about those loved ones that are lost. 
maybe even children that have wandered away. And Lord, I pray that your word might pierce down and provide comfort and strength and encouragement. Lord, we think of the message that the angel gave that day, peace. Lord, you've told us that you came that we might have peace. And so, give us all what we need today. May your word and your spirit work mightily among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, this, just this past Thursday, my, my wife and I, we went down with our children to Kansas City. We wanted to go and see some of the light displays that they had down there. And one of the things that we did while we were there is we went to the Museum of Art. And uh, right there as you walk in the main entryway, they have a, a giant tree set up and a, a huge nativity scene. There must have been upwards of 50 or more figures that were carved in Italy in the 18th century made out of ceramic and wood and cloth and then they were painted just uh, beautiful little figures and uh, as we're standing there looking at them you know certain of our children I think Violet mentioned you know the kings and different things that were there and we use that as a, a way to teach them that even though it's pictured this way this is not really what took place. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions. We, we see these nativities and we see the wise men standing there and the shepherds and we see the angels that are there. And really, if you strip all that down, most of that wasn't there. You know, it was Joseph and Mary and the baby. And then these shepherds came along uh, to witness what had been told to them. And... Uh, one of the things that we talked about the last couple of weeks, we spent some time talking about the wise men, uh, about the star, kind of unwrapping some truth about those things. And, you know, this morning, I want to take some time to talk about these angels here. Now, we could spend quite a long time talking about angels. A few years ago, we did one of our GMBCU classes on angels, and we went into great depth on that. We won't take time to do that here. We don't have enough time to do that here. What I want to focus in is the information that we see here in Luke chapter number 2. But one of the things about this time of year, as we talk about the Christmas story, you know, we like to watch Christmas movies, don't we? And everybody has their favorite Christmas story, Christmas movie that they like to watch. What's, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Who would raise their hand and tell us? What's your favorite Christmas movie? Yes, in the back. Miracle on 34th Street is one, yes. It's a wonderful life. My wife likes It's a Wonderful Life, yes. Christmas what, Cranks. What's that? Christmas Cranks. Christmas with the Cranks, yes. The Polar Express. Polar Express is one. Randy, did you have one? Christmas Story. Christmas Story. We've all got these different Christmas stories that we like, right? Christmas yeah. movies. Mine, I like Elf. Uh, that's one of mine. That scene where he takes the gum from underneath the railing and just starts eating all this free gum. I love it. But uh, now my wife spoke up and she said, it's a wonderful life. I have that written down here that my wife's favorite is it's a wonderful life. And here you have this angel who's sent down to help this lowly businessman and show him how much greater the world is because his life is in it. Now, I don't know. I, I kind of beg to differ on that just a little bit because... Seems the town's pretty boring with him, and then while he's gone, it seems like a lot of fun. I don't know, but <laughs> you have this angel that comes, okay? And, and in these different movies, in the nativity, cartoons, and whatever, in just society in general, we see all of these angels, but not necessarily given the true information of what the Scripture teaches us. You think about cherubs, Right? When we say cherub, what we often think of this fat, naked baby with wings, right? Why they always have to be naked, I don't know, but they always are. They're just these cute little naked babies flying all over the place. What they're doing, I'm not quite sure. There's the misconception that we become angels, that our loved ones die and, and they become angels. And, you know, I've done many funerals and talking to people that... Their loved one has passed, and they, you know, they talk about their loved one becoming an angel. That's kind of a misconception that we have. Um, the fact that all angels have wings, 
is one of the misconceptions, or depending on how you look at cherubim and seraphim, whether you view those as types of angels or different uh, heavenly beings, uh, cherubim have four wings, according to Ezekiel chapter number one. Uh, seraphim have six wings. We see that in Isaiah chapter number six, as well as Revelation chapter number four. Uh, but we kind of think as, as all angels have wings, going back to It's a Wonderful Life. Remember one of the things, whenever a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. That's the, the saying and the misconception uh, that is out there. And even there's misconceptions about their activities and what they do. You know, they, they kind of sit on a cloud all day and, and play a harp. And so we have all these different misconceptions about what angels do. Even in the songs that we sing, we sing things that aren't necessarily in Scripture. In fact, I was chuckling to myself at a couple of the songs that we sang this morning because I have them written down here. These, these familiar carols, angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain is one of the songs that we sing. Or hark the herald angels sing. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. Glories stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing, Alleluia, Christ the Savior is born. But is that really what happened? Is that what the Bible tells us is what happened? And so we're going to kind of look at this story here. Uh, in Luke chapter number 2, uh, of course, verses 1 through 7 talk about the journey to get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem where it was prophesied that the Christ child would be born. We looked at that already in Matthew chapter number 2 as far as that prophecy is concerned. And uh, laid in the manger there because there is no room for them in the inn and I've circled that no room. This ain't part of the message, but man, what a challenge it is to stop and think about. Do we have room for the Lord Jesus Christ? And uh, so we begin in verse number 8, and it tells us, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And uh, most likely those are the fields of Boaz that we read about in Ruth chapter number 4 says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now notice verse number 9, we find that word lo. I had you circle that last week in Matthew chapter number 2 concerning the star. This is an element of surprise here, of wonder. And so the angel of the Lord appears, and one of the things we see from studying angels throughout the Bible is when God allows them to, they, they can show themselves physically. They can manifest to us. They can step off from that spiritual plane and enter into the physical one that we can see. Um, there are times that not only do they physically manifest themselves, but you think of 2 Kings chapter number 6 where God gives certain people the ability to look into the spiritual realm. And uh, you remember that instance with Elisha and his servant and how afraid that he was. And Elisha, he's not, he's not worried. Why? Because he's been allowed to see the spiritual and he understands what's taking place. And so he prays, hey God, open his eyes that he can see. And his eyes are open, the servant's eyes are open and he looks and what does he see? The fiery chariot surrounding the mountains. He's able to see into the spiritual realm. Well, here these spiritual beings are allowed to manifest themselves in the physical realm. And there is a great difference between angels and demons. Even fallen angels and demons are different. Uh, but they, this angel here manifests himself, and, and angels are always referred to in the masculine, never in the feminine. And uh, we could chase some things down in, in Genesis chapter number 6. We've done that before and won't do that now. But I say he, he shows himself there because the Bible uses the masculine. And uh, notice the fear that comes upon them, just as you and I would be afraid. 
if an angel appeared to us from nowhere, we would be a, a, a very afraid. Um, but notice what the angel says in verse number 10. Fear not. And how often throughout the Bible does God give that message to His people? Whether He's the one that's saying it or whether His messenger is the one that is saying it, fear not. And we're reminded that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He says, For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And I love that fact. The good tidings of great joy are for all people. And we're reminded of Genesis chapter number 12 and that promise that was given to Abraham that in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because that Messiah that was promised all the way back in Genesis 3.15 would come through the line of Abraham, would come through the line of David and would now be born of Mary here. But it's to all people. And without that, you and I are without hope and we are lost. Unless it's to all people. Uh, Not just to one particular race or nation or people. He says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, it's Bethlehem, a Savior, which is Christ, remember that word Christ is Messiah, the Lord. And it was very up front and plain and clear the reason that Jesus came. You're to call his name Jesus, he was told. For he shall save his people from their sins. And then, of course, gives the sign there. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Which was out of the ordinary. So when you see it, you know this is the one that you're looking for. Then it says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying. See, one of the things that we see here is that it never tells us they're singing. We just kind of, that's tradition. We sing all these songs about the angels singing in the choir and, you know, playing the harps and everything else. It never tells us these angels sing. From studying the scripture, there is some debate about whether angels can sing at all. Um, Job 38, 7 talks about the morning stars singing at creation. Well, the word there doesn't necessarily mean song like we know a song. So there is some debate about that. That's that's for you to decide on your own. I'm not going to tell you whether angels sing or sing or don't sing or whatever. That's not really important uh, for what we're discussing. But just, I want you to understand, we can't just take everything that we've been told as truth. We can't just take tradition as truth. You say that's kind of a minor thing, whether they said it or whether they sang it. It is a minor thing, but a minor thing leads to a major thing. We want to take the Word of God as it is given to us here. And so, they praise God and say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And man, what a, what a powerful message that they deliver. I mean, you talk about being overwhelmed uh, by what's taking place here. The angel appears and said, hey, the Savior is born, and then the sky is full of these heavenly hosts who declare the glory of God and the fact that there can be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Because before this time, there is no peace on earth. We can't have peace with God without the Savior. There is no peace with God without forgiveness of sins. In fact, even in a a works-based religion, you'll never have peace. Jesus is the only source of peace that there is. He's it. He said, that's the reason I came, was to give you that peace. The peace that passes all understanding. One of His most precious names is He is the Prince of Peace. And when our lives are in turmoil, we're in in trouble, He wants to speak peace into that. I think of John chapter number 14 as Jesus is telling His disciples, I'm going to leave you. 
What did he say? Let not your heart be troubled. The idea of that storm, that turmoil. And there are times in our lives where we're in turmoil. Many people this time of year are in great turmoil. I think of a young lady who used to go to this church as a teenager named Tiffany. One year ago, her husband died, left her pregnant and with two small children. I guarantee you this time of year brings turmoil and trouble to that young lady. And for many of you, it may as well. When you think about this time of year with family and friends and everything else, it can leave us kind of in a storm. Jesus says, I want to, I want to speak peace into that. The only peace that we can have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do it apart from Him, there is no peace. But the message of peace and goodwill toward men. And it tells us how excited they were. But notice it was the angels, according to what we read here, they, they don't sing, they speak. You say, what's the big deal about that? Music is very emotional. Um, think about the different emotions that we feel. When the song comes on, our heart moves to that emotion, doesn't it? And so when we're, when we're listening to a happy song, we tend to be more upbeat and happy. It's interesting to watch different songs come on as little children are present. You have something that's very calm and mellow and the kids are kind of calm for the most part. You've got that hyper one that's hyper all the time, bouncing off the wall. That's the kind of the out of the ordinary. You've got a calm song playing and, and calm. Then you have a fast song comes on. And what happens? They start, they start moving and everything else. Don't tell people I was dancing in church. Uh, <laughs> Baptist church. I could get exiled for that. But that's what happens. They kind of move and shake and dance and everything else. Why? Because the emotion of the song kind of pours through it. It's really the language of the heart. Music is really something based off of Brings up experiences. And so when we think about the message of the Savior, it's not a song that's given to the angels or for the angels to sing. That's a song that's been given for you and I to sing. Why? Because if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, it's something that we have experienced in our own heart. Man, you think about this... Maybe a sad song comes on the radio and it brings up the thoughts and the memories of some sad experience that we have been through. It can move us to tears. There are love songs that my wife and I have that have to do with our relationship. And when I hear those songs, my, my heart is filled with love and compassion for my wife. Just in hearing the song. Why? Because we've lived life together. We've experienced things with one another. Of course, we have those favorite songs that we love to sing about our Savior. And man, when that song comes on or we spend some time singing that song, the emotion just wells up in us about all that God has done for us. Why? Because it's something that we experience for ourselves. There are things that we experience and a relationship that we have with God that the angels will never know. In fact, Ephesians chapter number 3 and elsewhere talks about how that we are an example for the angels to teach them some things about God and who He is. Turn with me to Revelation chapter number 5. Revelation chapter number 5. One of the things I point out as I turn to the book of Revelation is the most important chapters of Revelation for you and I are chapters 2 and 3. Those are the letters that we need to pay attention to. We need to make sure we're applying them to our lives. From 4 on, just kind of gives us some information. We are responsible to know it and to live according to it, but chapters 2 and 3 are vital for you and I. We get to chapter number 5. 
And we find the title deed to the earth here. This scroll written on the inside and the outside. And you can go online and, and look up the Bible study here on Revelation chapter number 5. And get all that information there. But we get to verse number 8. It tells us this. And when he had taken the book talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the only one who was worthy to open the book because he was slain for our sins. And so he comes and he takes the book, tells us the four beasts, okay? Those are the four living creatures that we see uh, in chapter number four there. And... Uh, says, the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps. This is talking about the four and twenty elders, which in my opinion is a representation of the church body. And golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they, talking about the four and twenty elders, sung a new song, saying, all right, so let's look at the song that they sang. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. This is a song that angels cannot sing. This is a song that only the redeemed can sing. Something that we've experienced. Man, we ought to love to sing about our Savior. We ought to love to sing about what He's done for us. I find it odd when a Christian doesn't like to sing. I find it very weird. Why? Because that song is tied to the heart. And when something has taken place in my heart, that song comes out. I don't care if you're a good singer or not. If the song's about Jesus, you ought to like to sing it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, the Bible tells us. The best you can do is make a joyful noise. That's what we ought to do. We ought to love to sing about it. We ought to have that song in our heart. Why? Because we've experienced something. Experience doesn't equal truth. I do want to point that out. But just because we've experienced something, our hearts can deceive us. But when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior and He's washed my sin away according to the Bible way, man, I've experienced something pretty powerful. And I'll never forget that day when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Man, that joy just overcame me. The emotion, the, the, man, the tears that came over me. I mean, that doesn't have to happen at salvation, but that's what happened to me. And I've never gotten over that. And I've never forgotten that. And I love to sing songs about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they sing this song here, the redeemed. Sing this song. You've redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, just as we read in Luke chapter number 2, unto all people. That it doesn't matter what country you're from. The Lord will redeem you. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. The Lord will redeem you. It doesn't matter what language you speak. The Lord will redeem you. We can sing that song. And of course... Look at the work that He's done into us. Verse 10, And it's made us unto our God kings and priests. We shall reign on the earth. Man, what a powerful thing that's taking place here. But notice verse number 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands and thousands singing with a loud voice. No, that's not what it says. Saying with a loud voice. Why? Because they can't sing this song. It's not a song written for their hearts. They've not experienced it. 
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. The four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And so we find here in Luke chapter number 2, the, the angels delivering this message. And they tell us with their words that the Messiah, the Savior, is born. What they said, we should sing. And maybe you're here today without Jesus Christ as your Savior. Man, we had the song time, and that seems kind of weird to you. And for those that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that is a weird thing. Where else do you go to gather together to sing with a bunch of group of people? Nowhere. Nowhere else do you go to do that on a regular basis. Why? Because we've experienced something. We found faith and salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that puts a song in our heart. Maybe you're here today without Christ and you can't sing that song. I want to encourage you to trust in Jesus Christ today. He didn't come just to save a certain people, He offers that free gift for all people. Whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. He wants to and He's willing to save you today. That's the whole reason that He came. This time of year we stop and we remember the Savior coming into this world. The whole point of what He came to do. He Himself said it. I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. I've not come to call the righteous, He said. I called, came to call sinners to repentance. He offers the message that you can be born again. He wants to do this work in your heart, in your life. He wants to change you and put this song in your heart so that you too can sing the song of the redeemed. And I want to encourage you to trust in Him today. Christian, maybe you've lost your song. Maybe you lost that joy that comes with salvation. You know why you've lost that? It's because of sin. Our sin takes that song away. And it breaks the fellowship that we have with our Savior. I want to encourage you today to get that taken care of. To find that restored fellowship. And you can, as David said... Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I can sing that song again. Whatever it is you need, the Lord will give it to you if you ask Him for it.